When it comes to creative methods of catching prey, not many animals are able to rival spiders. Not just being among the small group of animals that create traps to catch their prey, but also having many different methods of trapping their prey. And central to nearly all of their trapping methods is their ability to spin a web. However, the way in which they do this is evolutionarily puzzling, because the way they catch their prey is quite advanced, and it seems that the precursor to these abilities, just the ability to produce silk, would be useless to hunt creatures on its own. So how did spiders develop such complex prey-catching abilities? Spider webs and other silken structures typically don't fossilize very well, but there are examples of ancient spider webs preserved in amber, and the oldest spider web is known from Spain, and dates all the way back to around 110 million years ago in the mid Cretaceous period. The web was comparable to modern spider webs in that it was intentionally connected together in a pattern, although the exact shape cannot be known as only a section of the web has been preserved. The web was also definitely used for catching prey, as preserved alongside the spider web were several different bugs that had fallen victim to it. So since the dinosaurs were around, there were spiders using webs to catch prey in a very similar way to today. However, there are single strands of silk that date back further than this, but also the spider is much more likely to fossilize than its web, and there are spiders that have spinnerets, the organ spiders used to control their silk, dating back many millions of years before this. So they must have been producing silk in some fashion long before this. Spiders are incredibly ancient, and descend from a group of animals that came out of the sea to make their home on land many millions of years before any vertebrate. Vertebrates all descend from one aquatic ancestor, However, the arthropods descend from three different lineages that left the sea. The insects, the myriapods that contains millipedes and centipedes, and the arachnids. The earliest arachnids in the fossil record are a group of creatures called the Trigonotabida that date all the way back to around 420 million years ago and looked a lot like ticks. The earth above the sea line at this time was otherworldly. A day lasted 21 hours and there were no trees the largest thing on land being an 8 metre tall fungus named Prototaxites, and the plants that did exist looked like they were straight out of science fiction. And with no birds or any aerial predators for that matter, it would have been a land crawling with creepy crawlies. And although their first fossils only date back to around 300 million years ago, DNA evidence shows that spiders most likely evolved earlier than this, very soon after arachnids had become capable of terrestrial ventures, and long before vertebrates would do the same. The earliest spider fossils are known from the Carboniferous period, which was the first time in the Earth's history where the landscape started to somewhat resemble anything that exists today. Trees had evolved, and large forests covered much of the globe. However, these weren't related to modern trees, and were actually more closely related to ferns. Today, most species of plants grow from seeds, but in the Carboniferous period, plants spread by spores like ferns still do today, and the trees were no exception. However, although the landscape would have almost resembled a modern rainforest, the inhabitants of these ecosystems were very strange, as many of the large animals were giant arthropods, including some species of arachnids. But spiders from this period aren't known to have grown any larger than what would be considered normal for today. Spiders from this time still retained certain primitive traits from other arachnids, like a segmented abdomen, making their tail end look more like other arachnids like scorpions. And amazingly, a family of these spiders known from Southeast Asia have survived into the present, still having a segmented abdomen. It isn't known for sure if spiders only evolved to build webs once, or if many different spider lineages ended up evolving the ability on their own. DNA evidence shows that there isn't a singular group of spiders that are really good at building webs, and actually, many spiders that are great at building webs are closely related to other spiders that aren't. However, generally, it is still more likely that webs evolved once among spiders, but some spiders just ended up evolving to lose this ability later, as the many behaviours required for web weaving seem too complicated to have evolved over and over again. The ability to make silk proteins has evolved multiple times among arthropods, yet spiders are the only animals that have then gone on to master its usage to the point of making complex webs. If it evolved multiple times among spiders, why didn't it evolve multiple times among other arthropod groups that can produce silk? 
However, it is known that silk development in arachnids actually predates spiders. The fossil of a creature named Atacopus was discovered that dates back to around 380 million years ago that had silk glands. Atacopus looked a lot like a spider but had many primitive traits that later spiders would lose, like a very distinctive tail. Atacopus would not have been able to do anything very complex with its silk and definitely wouldn't have been capable of making webs. Spiders produce silk in an internal gland but they are able to precisely control where it goes using organs on their abdomen known as spinnerets. Atacopus had silk glands but lacked spinnerets, so wouldn't have been very precise with its silk placement, most likely having to physically move its body around in order to lay down the silk, so it is thought that it may have used it for something more simple like covering its eggs, which nearly all spiders do. So silk production and maybe even web development isn't unique to spiders, and they actually inherited it from some of their ancestors. Atacopus wasn't the only tailed spider, and they actually must have been a fairly successful group, as although they have gone extinct now, they persisted on much longer than the Carboniferous period, with there being a tailed spider relative preserved in amber from around 100 million years ago called Chimera rachne that did have spinnerets. Chimera rachne's spinnerets were unusually long, and there are species of spiders today that have similarly long spinnerets, like the funnel web spiders, that make very simple webs by laying blankets of webbing across grass and other vegetation on the ground. So these close spider relatives may have done the same. So this very simple web design could be ancestral to all spider webs. But how did spiders start to develop complex patterns? When spiders and their relatives first evolved, flying creatures were yet to evolve, but relatively soon after they had left the oceans, some animals started to evolve flight. The first animals to fly were insects, and the earliest uncontroversial fossilized example of a flying insect was called Delet Shala, that are known to have lived from around 350 million years ago, although almost certainly predate this. When insects first appeared, there were little to no aerial predators to hunt them, and so many of their predators would have been landbound. As spiders were able to produce silk, they were uniquely positioned to take advantage of this new food source. Once spiders could produce silk and even very simple webs, this would be the evolutionary intermediate needed for natural selection to get to work and start producing more and more complex webs, as initially the web wouldn't have had to have been that complicated to catch flying animals. For instance, New Zealand glowworms are effective at catching small flying insects, despite having a singular strand of silk hanging from the top of a cave and not a complex web. The glowworms use their luminescence to lure in their prey, but primitive spiders lived at a time when flying insects had only just evolved, and so would have been less effective at flying and less adapted to countering aerial traps. So it is possible to catch insects with very simple traps, so initially spiders would have only needed very simple webs to catch aerial insects. But over time, as flying insects increased in diversity and improved their speed and maneuverability, spiders evolved more complex webs. For instance, moths have small scales that will shed if they get caught on a web, allowing the moth to slip through. But some type of orb weaving spiders have a stretched out spider web, meaning that when the moth strikes the web and tumbles through, it will run out of scales before reaching the bottom of the web, eventually getting caught. So spider webs can be pretty simple and still catch a fly, but as they have been locked in an arms race with insects since not long after creatures left the ocean, they had to keep improving their designs. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.